Time Warner building at the Allen Room, Allen and Room. it's March the 7th and March the 8th. And we're going to hear a lot more about that on this program here. So coming back now to, to, to your early influences in Jamaica, because, <clears throat> you know, it is said that Kingston seemed to, to, to just have a, a, a continued cauldron of artists. You know, when you think of some of our major artists, Kingston seemed to be the, the hub there. You, you said you were on the Mountain View side, and we are just talking uh, in, in the break just now, and I was telling you that we also had a guest on here. His name was um, um, Mr. Winkler, who, of who wrote The Lunatic, and he was from Mountain View, and he gave us a story about him father mm -hmm. running down one night on Mountain View there. But anyway. I didn't realize I was a Caucasian until uh, I met my <laughs> well, father. You didn't have mirrors in your house or something? No, I mean, uh, I, 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 I listen, do you get up in the morning and look at yourself and say, backside me bone? <laughs> We know he must have had those kind of situations because he said you're a very disciplined child and rude child back then. And I can understand that because um, you're still showing it today. I don't know. <laughs> I respect the, the law. <laughs> <laughs> but, but going back to your early influences again, and you mentioned some names there. Looking back at it now, wh what role were, were your parents playing in all of this? You know what? My parents were really just what you would call encouragers because they're just glad to see the Comanche having such a wonderful time. I do something. I do something. Mm. I'm not even getting in no trouble, trouble with it, yeah. even though I could have gotten in trouble because you had to go to some places that was very suspect. <laughs> I mean, I was in some backyard area where, where people said, don't go down there, you know? And I would go. I didn't care because this music was like, like a magnet. It yes. pulled me. Yes. So one of the things I want to tell you about Mountain View, we were in, a, call it a relatively comfortable middle-class home. Well, not far from where we were living was an area where folks were a little on the downside of yeah, things. Yeah. And um, I would go down there, especially on a Friday or a Saturday night, when this phenomenon came in Jamaica that is really more than anywhere else in the world, sound system. Mm -hmm. And when sound system came on Friday or Saturday, and I think among others, Duke Reed would bring his truck on the sound and drop that needle, I would go down there and just be standing there listening to this music and watching these people just let it all hang out, celebrating life because of the hard work or the hard life or whatever, because that music was doing it. Yes. And that rubbed off on me in a way that when I play my music, I'm still thinking people dancing. I'm coming with the rhythm and the groove and the swinging mm -hmm. and so on. So Mountain View got down in my system musically, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I was just a, a, a young fellow not looking for trouble, but the music was the thing. And my parents just encouraged me, you know. Mm -hmm. My mother was more inclined to say, do your schoolwork. Don't go. She would talk, tell my father, don't go out to pictures tonight. Because <laughs> I couldn't wait to go to, you know, entertainment. Yes. So I was um, really in a good way. And you went to high school. You're I went to JC. JC. I know you're JC. I went man. to JC. Yes, yes. But honestly, I don't promote this kind of activity, but I used to tea regular. <laughs> From and where? for those people who don't know what TFOT means, it means <laughs> to sneak out <laughs> to of sneak. a place. No, no you got to say, it. no, no more proper diction than that. Too. Well, right now, my mother would say, I'm going, box you. <laughs> <laughs> she would say things like, I'm going, your boy, I'm going, wash out your mouth with jeers. <laughs> I don't, I mean, but jeers is used to what they wash out. Dog. Let's, right, be, I know. let's behave ourselves. Yeah, let's, be, yeah. Let, let's go back here. So, JC, so after you left, in leaving Jamaica now, what happened when you left Jamaica? Miami, Florida. We were actually near Miami Beach. And first thing I do, I had two loves at that time because I'm lonely. I miss my home mm -hmm. friends, but I'm glad I'm here. Mm -hmm. All the little, nice, pretty tall buildings. This is where Superman leap from above. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm glad to be in are America. You, are you there? This is the land where Louis Armstrong come from, yeah. Nat King Cole, Roy Rogers, Gene Autry. This is where they come from. So I start Walk Street in a safe way. Because it was safer mm -hmm. those days. And I'm mm -hmm. walking up and down and I hear music from this bar or music from that club. And I would go in the club. I'm on the age. I would meet the, the musicians. And there was two kinds of situations that run into these clubs where white Americans were playing their music. Mm -hmm. I go in there, welcome, and I end up playing. Hey, man, you're really cool, man. And I'll play, right? I'd go into other bars where the brothers were playing, the African Americans, and I was em they embraced me. I was at home with everybody. Best of both worlds, huh? Best of both worlds. No sense of you that and you that. Everybody, we're a family. And I go play. And I get all excited and I play. 
and a booking agent, a small booking agent, I mean, a man who, not modest, decided, he came to me and said, hey kid, you're really, really swinging and we're gonna get you on the, you're great, whatever. You're gonna be on the Ed Sullivan show. This was a big show back then. And all I know is one thing led to another and between jazz clubs mm -hmm. um, and my favorite other activity was watching boxing. I want you to take a pause right there. We're watching Caribbean Lifestyle TV, a special guest, Monty Alexander. When we come back, 